And that was when they found out that this whole time I had internal bleeding, I had blood clots, two things that could easily kill people. My lungs were getting filled with blood. So it's been six months since I almost died, but well, God said no. Guys, I'm making this video to encourage you to not be afraid no matter what you're facing in life, especially when things are not looking good. To also bring awareness to any woman that has a negative blood type, B negative, O negative, A negative, and to appreciate all the amazing people that God used to keep me and the baby, especially my amazing husband, Victor Fayo. I love you. I apologize in advance. It will be a long video, but if you can watch till the end, I will really appreciate it. So when we got married, someone gave me this book, Supernatural Childbirth, written by a woman that doctors told would never have kids. But not only did she defy all odds, she had a miscarriage and then she went on to have four kids so i told victor whenever we're ready to have kids you have to read this book so we can be on the same page he read the book and then he wrote down several quotes bible verses on god's promises on childbearing from the book so when we were ready to have zion as soon as i was pregnant the hospital did all kinds of blood tests and they told me because my blood type is b negative that i have to get what they call rogam shot otherwise i may lose the pregnancy and that if i don't lose that first pregnancy i would definitely lose the second one because my blood cell doesn't have the RH factor protein, which is why some women, they would have several miscarriages. Some would have one child and then they would start having miscarriages after that. It doesn't apply to everybody or everybody that has a miscarriage, but for some women, it's just because of their blood type. So if you're a woman, find out your blood type. This is not genotype. This is blood type. If you're B negative, O negative, A negative, and you want to have kids, make sure that as soon as you're pregnant, that you get the Rogam shot so that you don't lose the baby. So they gave me the Rogam shot twice, actually, during that pregnancy. Pregnancy. and I thought that that was it. I didn't know that I was supposed to get it again next time that I'm pregnant. Now Zion's pregnancy was easy. I didn't throw up, not even once. I would feel nauseous in the morning during the first trimester, but by 11 or 12 in the afternoon, I'll be fine. I walked between two to five miles almost every day. Did my five mile walk. Amen, somebody. At physical therapy, they had me doing all kinds of exercises, dumbbells, squats. I was walking on treadmill. I drove myself everywhere until the week that I had the baby. I kept doing my show back to back. There was one month that I did like 19 episodes. I was four months pregnant when we traveled for our 10th anniversary and that's when we took this picture. So the only time that I got sick during that pregnancy was when Victor had to go for an eight weeks training in California. I was seven months at the time. Thankfully, Kat came to stay with me for some weeks. So everything went smoothly with Zion's pregnancy except for her delivery when I developed preeclampsia. Now fast forward to last year, we decided to have another child and we planned for the child to also be born in July like the rest of the family so july of this year and because we thought that the pregnancy would be easy like zion's pregnancy we decided to move out of colorado to launch our business adults while i'm pregnant the photo shoot was already done so we we're ready to launch so we were using a new hospital when i got pregnant it was supposed to be a temporary thing because we were moving out of the state so i didn't transfer my medical records which i should have because i was like i'll just transfer it to the new hospital when we get to the new state i just called i said i'm pregnant and they said to me come in at 14 weeks for your ultrasound they didn't do any blood test i was like oh okay but then i started getting sick like really sick and we thought oh it's just because i was in my first trimester but i noticed that i wasn't getting any breaks the nausea would last the entire day dizziness would last all day headache i'm anemic so even before i was pregnant victor would always make sure that I took iron supplements but this time around it didn't help it didn't help at all the fatigue was on another level I was driving home one day when I suddenly got dizzy on the highway I mean it was a miracle how I made it home that day that's another story on its own so we went to the emergency they did all kinds of tests and they said I was just dehydrated I was like that's it. They gave me IVs. I felt okay for like two days. But then I got sick again, like really sick. Back to the ER again, they gave me IV. On October 27th, 2022, I wrote in my journal that I've been lost in the midst of endless exhaustion, dizziness, nausea. I knew that something was wrong, but I didn't know what it was. And then on November 1st, 
I started bleeding. This was late at night. The first thing I felt was fear. And then I remember what I read in the book about not entertaining fear no matter what you're facing because fear is your biggest enemy. This is why do not be afraid is written 365 times in the Bible. It's like one reminder for each day of the year to not entertain fear. Also, as human beings, we think better when we're not panicking. So I calmed down, I called on Victor. He pulled out the notes that he had written from the book, Bible verses, God's promises concerning childbearing and we prayed affirming our trust in God regardless of what we were seeing and then in the morning we went to the ER the same ER that I've been going to by the way since I started getting sick because it's the closest one to my house a doctor asked me what's your blood type I said B negative did you get rogam shots since this pregnancy I said no she immediately said oh you probably lost the pregnancy already but we'll still do an ultrasound and then we'll send you to a bigger hospital for rogam shot so you don't lose other pregnancies. Rogam shot contains antibodies that would stop your immune system from seeing your baby as a foreign object that it has to eject. Now my pregnancy was already eight weeks at the time so my body had already believed that this is a foreign object that it has to get rid of which was why the doctor said that you probably lost the baby already. I don't know if it was the tone or the way she said it like it was nothing oh you probably lost the baby already. All I know is I didn't like her tone she didn't sound like she cared so I said you know what I'd rather go to the bigger hospital for everything and I need to do. Guys, that was like the longest drive of our lives, not knowing whether or not our baby was alive. So we went to Memorial North. That's a great hospital, by the way, to have a baby if you live in Colorado Springs. That's where I had Zion, very beautiful hospital. The doctors there, they were so nice. They said to me that the ER doctor shouldn't have spoken so recklessly without doing an ultrasound. The first thing they did was an ultrasound. And guess what, guys? The baby was alive. They gave me all kinds of medications via uh, IV and then they gave me Rogam short. But because I didn't get it early, they said that the chances of a miscarriage are still really high. So they put me on full bed rest from that day, November 2nd. My legs had to be raised at all times. No lifting anything heavier than milk and certainly no lifting Zion and I was not allowed to fly. That's the day we took these pictures. We were so happy that the baby was alive. We thought the worst was over only for me to to start getting sicker after I was discharged. Apparently my body was already convinced that I had to eject the baby. So the Rogam shot was fighting to protect the baby and then I was caught in between their battle. Gradually, I could barely walk. There was like a huge pressure in my pelvic area as if someone was pressing down on me from inside. I could barely talk. I kept having palpitations. My heart was racing. It was pounding. Someone standing next to me could see it and the fatigue was indescribable. I had no strength, like zero strength. Sitting for more than 20 minutes was painful. Getting up was even harder. Being in a moving car for more than 20 minutes became really, really tough. Every time the car Patterns, I would shake violently from the inside. It made me dizzy, nauseous, and sick. And the only comfortable position was either lying down or reclined with my legs raised up. The only grace I had, just like Zion's pregnancy, is I wasn't throwing up. At the two weeks follow up at a clinic, a new doctor said that all is well now, I can start my normal activities, and that I can lift my daughter. But I didn't feel fine. We got in the car at the end, Victor said, Mother, Doctor, you don't mind that doctor, don't lift Zion. No. But four days after that, Victor was in the bathroom and Zion was trying to get on the bed with me and she couldn't. So she was crying and she was wondering why her mom was just staring at her. It, it really broke my heart. So I lifted her with all my strength. And two hours after, I started bleeding again and we're back to the hospital. Ultrasound, once again, baby was alive. Doctor apologized for saying I could lift my daughter. Apology accepted, but guys, we changed doctors. December came, another bleeding episode without doing anything to trigger it. Keep in mind that since October that I started getting sick, even before they put me on bed rest on November 2nd, Victor has been the only one doing all the cooking, the cleaning, bathing Zion, dressing her, feeding her, taking care of her, taking me to all doctor's appointments that I had, taking me to the chiropractor because I was really sore from just being in one spot. My back was aching, my butt was aching. Sometimes it would make like three different meals before I could eat anything because I didn't have appetite. And not once, not once did he complain, guys. He made it possible for me to actually observe the bed rest. He was also the only one working on the hair product. You know, we couldn't hire anyone since we were making it in our home and I could only do computer stuff and I would watch him and Zion sing together, read together, play together 
and I would cry because I couldn't even get up on my own. I had no control of my body. And so I would cry and Victor would hold me close. He would tell me, all will be well. You will have this baby. You will get your strength back. And by the way, he didn't start caring when I got sick. He has always cared for me. So I'm extremely grateful for him. Sometimes I will push myself to do things and then I will start bleeding again. But with Victor's help, I was doing the show from home whenever I had the strength. So I still managed to make you guys laugh despite all that was happening. So my friend Yemi Oguntoyimbo brought tons of food for us, okra soup, a four euro of father rice or father stew and, and so much more. My friend started coming to help out. Kemi Adetayo came from New York with her children. Every night she would massage my legs because they were swollen and they spent Christmas with us. I was able to go to church for Christmas Eve so I was really happy about that. Right after they left, Kat came in another selfless human being you guys know Kat she's not a guest on this show she cooked cleaned got me to take a walk on January 1st it was my first time of taking a walk in three months it's the new year and your girl is taking a walk God has been so so good so faithful man say happy new year Kat happy new year it was only a quarter of a mile walk guys but for the next three days i was so you no know, we thought now that the first trimester was over that i would get well so we released our adults video to launch the business that was january 8th the order started coming in and we immediately knew that we needed help thank you guys for all dream by the way so thanks to kat raf rizzi rachel the only thing that saved us was that victor had made tons of products before we launched so that january doctors said the threatened miscarriage was over but that i now have placenta previa i was like which one is placenta previa again so placenta previa is when the placenta partially or completely covers the opening of the uterus causing severe bleeding in the pregnant woman mine was complete previa guys so the prayer now became for the placenta to move because if it doesn't move they will have to take the baby out early so i started bleeding again uh, this time around the bleeding didn't stop for two weeks guys we stopped going to the hospital because we knew what they would say also driving was making things worse so victor hired a nanny for zion she would feed her change her take her to the library Pasonero came from la brought me beans and akara thank you daddy this man is truly my father but then when february came the bleeding started again in fact the whole election period i was bleeding this time around it didn't stop for almost a month every day a lot of blood by the way don't forget that i'm anemic so i could hardly do regular shows i started doing shorts that's one minute videos except for every now and then that i had strength uh, i couldn't go to church or anywhere the missus would come to the house shout out to my missus by the way she's amazing thank you lee in march dr baba came to visit from california and i did some cooking that day i was so happy and then april came on april 16th i woke up at 2 a.m. to use the bathroom and then I started throwing up. I threw up more than 25 times that night. After throwing up all the food in me, I now started throwing up blood. Victor called 911 and from the moment that he dialed and the, the moment they arrived in my home, it was four minutes. When the paramedics came and they saw that I was throwing up blood, they said I needed immediate surgery, that they are taking me to a hospital that is equipped for trauma for pregnant women. So I started praying that they would not do any surgery that night because I didn't want them to take the baby out prematurely. So they tried to start an IV in the ambulance and they couldn't find my vein. And so they gave me a shot to knock me out. But guys, I did not knock out too. <laughs> I, I couldn't sleep because I kept throwing up. I was still throwing up blood. And even when we got to the hospital, I kept throwing up. Doctors were going in and out. I kept asking about the baby. I'll be like, how's my baby? How's my baby? And every one of them kept telling me, it's okay, it's okay. The focus right now is on you. We'll take care of the baby later. But right now, we're focusing on you. So they said I threw up so much that I tore my intestine and that that's where the blood was coming from. But God is a prayer answering God. They didn't do a surgery for me that night. They were able to treat me without doing a surgery. And when I was discharged, the first person that called was Pastor Tunde Badru from Texas. You know, we didn't tell him what we were going through, but 
every time that something happened with that pregnancy, this man will call and he will say that he just wanted to check up on us. God bless you, sir. So on May 1st, the doctor said that the placenta had moved and that we can now attempt a going full time and attempt vaginal birth. But some days after, I noticed that I couldn't breathe deeply. The AC will be on, the fan will be on. I will still say, please open the window. I was breathing, but wasn't deep breath. Only for doctors to say that it's because my amniotic fluid was too much. The fluid that surrounds the baby. It's bad if it's not enough, but it's also bad if it's too much. And they said that they needed to do a procedure to drain the water so that I could breathe. And of course, they said even after doing the procedure, it may fill back up again. So I was like, what's the point? I said, no, 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 no. I'll wait it out. Thank God for my amazing mother-in-law who arrived that May. From the day that she arrived, she took over all the cooking and also taking care of Zion. The baby is now six months old and she's still with us. So if you have my mother-in-law's number, please help me thank her. Like, honestly, I don't know how to thank her. She has been beyond amazing. If you're a mother-in-law, by the way, and you're watching me you were brought up with the idea that you're not supposed to cook for your daughter-in-law i don't know where they found teachings like that you should just always put yourself in someone else's shoes and think of what you would have wanted from your own mother-in-law just be human be kind treat her as your as you would treat your own daughter believe it or not a woman will never forget how you treat her when she's pregnant so that's me when i got a bit stronger we were able to do pregnancy photo shoots i was so happy that day i had energy I had joy because even the doctors didn't think that we would come that far. It was a whole community project. I'm grateful to all the people that went with us. Also, I started doing the money series that I do every year. I don't even know where I got the strength. Sometimes I will ask them questions and I will make them full screen and then I will leave to raise up my legs. So it was really, really tough, but I'm happy that I was able to do them. So, but the breathing did not get better. I wanted to get to July to have the baby, you know, but at some point Victor told the doctors, he was like, please take out the baby and so they gave me a date for the c-section dr lovett or Ayato came just like she came for zion's delivery mommy cooked a ton of food that we were still eating months after the delivery she was the one driving zion and grandma everywhere while victor and i were at the hospital mommy is beyond amazing and on delivery day everything went well or so we thought you know we were so happy to finally see the baby but some hours after the c-section i was doing skin to skin with the baby when i realized that i was dizzy i was really dizzy more than i've ever been in my life and that i was having trouble breathing so i gave the baby to victor and i pressed the button to call for the noise the moment they pressed my stomach i started gasping for air and i could barely say anything i couldn't even say i can't breathe not to talk about saying i love you to victor there was no time it was like everything just I've never experienced anything like that ever in my life. I've experienced difficulty breathing deeply, but this was different. One nurse was shouting, oxygen level dropping, blood pressure dropping, and I felt like my spirit was leaving my body. All I remember was one nurse reached behind the bed, picked an oxygen mask and put it on my face. And that was when I was able to breathe again. And I was like, what just happened? Like really, what just happened? what the heck so for the next one hour guys they, they were trying to figure out what was what was happening what was wrong different doctors started coming in they were trying to figure out what was happening and each one of them the moment they touch my stomach i would start gasping for air i would start gasping until they put the oxygen back my blood pressure dropped drastically my oxygen level dropped drastically the whole room was filled with doctors and nurses there were at least 15 people in my room that day and then i saw nurses lying lined up outside the door, everybody trying to figure out what was happening. So they started doing all kinds of tests. They were bringing all these machines into my room. So they did ultrasound. They didn't find anything. They did blood work. They did x-ray, nothing. They did EKG, nothing. And then at some point, guys, one of the doctors that came started saying nonsense. She started saying, oh, there's nothing wrong. She just doesn't have a high pain tolerance. Ah, guys, I wanted to answer her. So, but there was, there was a lot that I could have said to her. But I had an oxygen mask on and I could barely breathe. And the little strength that I had left, I decided I would use it to advocate for myself. Despite her nonsense talk, I kept saying something is wrong. I refuse to keep quiet. If you're a black woman, you're having a baby in America, please always advocate for yourself. Don't ever keep quiet. Whatever you are feeling, keep saying it until they do something about it. Thank God that she's not my doctor and thank God that my doctor did not give up on me. My doctor's name is Dr. Alicia Vandersleys. She kept ordering all kinds of tests. 
until they did CAT scan. They wheeled me in my bed to a different part of the building for that test. And that was when they found out that this whole time I had internal bleeding, I had blood clots, two things that could easily kill people. My stomach had swelled up. Apparently my lungs were getting filled with blood. And so as soon as they found out, they said they had to take me back to the theater for another surgery. The same day. So I'm having two surgeries in one day, guys. Guys, saying goodbye to Victor for that second surgery was the hardest thing that I've ever done because no one knew what would happen. As they do with every surgery, they were telling us this is a major surgery, you know, this and this could go wrong. And it hit differently this time around because we just had a surgery with complications. All I knew is I just, I couldn't leave him with those two babies. I love you. And then they knocked me out completely for this one, unlike the C-section. And Victor came, he came along as far as he could because they wouldn't let him in the theater for this one. So I had to say goodbye. Uh -huh. <laughs> I'm sorry. <laughs> it was so hard. I was trying not to, sh I was trying not to show, you know, me, I'm, I'm never serious. I'm always making jokes. And I was like, oh, I'll be back before you know it. I'll be out soon. But guys, it was the most difficult thing to do. Because they always tell you what could go wrong. And then at the end of the video, they will say, you could also resort to death. But guys, God was there. God was in the theater room. And he was faithful. Once again, he was faithful. So when I came out, when I came out, apparently I was swollen. He told me after when he saw me, he was like, whoa. Zion refused to let me touch her or she wouldn't get close to me. It was later. They were all telling me how swollen I was because I didn't know. So it was after the swelling went down and everything <laughs> that we took pictures because apparently I looked scary. The next day, they started the blood transfusion. I've never had blood transfusion in my life, but because I'm anemic and I've lost a lot of blood from two surgeries in one day and I've had internal bleeding and I'm still bleeding because I just had a baby. They had to give me uh, blood. And then the third day they said my blood count was still very low. I needed more blood transfusion. And then I started physical therapy at the ICU. And not once did Victor leave my side, guys, not once. And as the days went by, the nurses, the doctors, they were coming to see me one by one, sometimes in groups. They were also concerned. Everybody just wanted to know Oh, did she make it? Did she make the end? They, they told me, they said it was a miracle that I, I made it. I could have been a statistic. So I'm so grateful that I did not. I did not become a statistic. But guess who never came to see me? The only person that did not come was that witch. That doctor that said that I didn't have high pain tolerance. Can you imagine? She never came back. And guys, I got to hear the stories of so many women during this journey. I had no idea that miscarriage was that common. Almost all the women I talked to were sharing their stories with me, even people that I knew, and I had no idea that they had a miscarriage. It's heartbreaking the amount of couples that have experienced it. I have more empathy now when people say that they had a miscarriage. Sometimes I'll just start crying. I can't, I can't even explain it. And it has nothing to do with age. I've heard of people in their 20s who have had multiple miscarriages. I also got to know that a lot of women experience placenta previa. Some of them in their very first pregnancy. Someone even told me that they had to take out her baby at 27 weeks because of placenta previa. Some spent several weeks at the hospital because of pregnancy complications. The truth is so many women have been through worse than I did and I just wish that more people would share their stories so that other people going through it will know that they are not alone. Now I see each new day as a gift. A lot of things that that would normally upset me now they're like nah and of course i know for sure that god is not done with me that he still has a lot that he wants me to do on this side of eternity and not long after i came home i saw a video by punch a woman that had triplets and then she developed blood clots in nigeria and they told her husband that there was nothing they could do that he should be a man and that woman died and i was like why would they just do another surgery and treat her like they treated me why would a whole hospital said there was nothing they could do. So for so long, 
I couldn't talk about this without crying. If you know any woman that is pregnant, please be extra kind to them. Some people have it easy, you know, like I had Zion's pregnancy, but you just never know what someone is going through. Also, marriage is not 50-50, guys. It is 100-100. Even if you were brought up to believe that some things are the woman's role, when you truly love someone, you learn whatever you think that other person's role is so that when someone is sick or something, you pick up the slack and you're not doing them a favor. You don't do it as if you're doing them a favor because you don't see it as I'm helping them or it's their job. No, you see it as this is my house. This is my home. This is my family. This is my responsibility. If you cook together, clean together, raise your kids together, the test of true love is in the action, not in words. Unfortunately, some people treat outsiders better than they treat their spouse. Please don't lose them before you value them. And if you're pregnant, as you're watching this, I'm praying that you have a safe delivery. If you have complications, please know that you're not alone. If you're planning on having kids or you're already pregnant, please read this book. You know, it helps. If you're facing a medical challenge right now, please don't give up. If you're going through chemo, there's a light at the end of the tunnel. Hey! Hey! hey. hey. Say hi! <laughs> And here he is, Zen Bobo. Zen means God's gracious gift. We also call him Oluwada Milola, which means God favored me. Oluwa Shijibomi, which means God shielded me. God is my shield. Oluwada Misi, which means God kept me. His godmother, Dr. Lovett, named him Kosi Sochuku, which means as the Lord wants it. And every day with him has been a reminder of God's faithfulness, a reminder of the importance of having good hospitals and good doctors. So I experienced another postpartum illness. Like four months after having him and I was like how come adults did not prevent my hair from shedding and all because it was really bad I had to cut my hair so but then they told me the stress of what I went through alone is more than enough to cause hair loss I'm not even mad I'm alive that's the most important thing so I cut it last last month and literally Adults has been helping me. It's starting to grow back. You guys can see. I'm really grateful to a lot of people. I'm so grateful for friends who were there throughout this journey. Lisa Upon, God bless you. She called almost every day. Lady Ogulabi and her husband. Lady God will honor you. I'm really grateful for you. Rudolph Okonko called almost every day. Of course, Dr. Lovett. Thank you, mommy. You are honestly you are my mother. I'm grateful for Pastor Nino Fafuura, Mr. and Mrs. Otenaiki. Not only were they there for me when I was pregnant, this if we came, spent four days with us. Dr. Sesson Olu Ashola from UCH Bada and his wife, they came and they spent four days with those guys. Kemi Abimbola and her husband, Officer Esheo Farida Naburima, kept ordering me things to make me feel better. Mommy Gold in Texas, she was there for me the entire time. She even sent me food. Uncle Shaya Jagwe and his wife in Kentucky. The Oduwales in Toronto. Mommy Adilo in Atlanta. Nostola at UCH. Mrs. Adeniro at King's Palace. Fela in Atlanta. Lucille Mojo in Loretta and Henry. Lucy, Voke, Sheon, and Michael, Olamide and Brobayo, Olamide's mom will call to pray for me on the phone. Adaeze, thank you so much. My cousin Odonla and her husband, Dr. Osunji in Maryland, if you're your Matthew, thank you. She ordered me a care package. Senator Natasha Akuti was calling to check up on me, to encourage me. Auntie Grace Ofure would pray for me on the phone. I'm grateful for the Help Me Waka family, the Tundilanera family, Linda and Wali Ayoade, Mr. and Mrs. Simowede, Mrs. Sifida, the Oni Dera of Idera, Dami and Tosin Apoti Eri, Auntie Bosse and Onkudele in Raleigh, Abimbola Ishola, Rebecca Hashbaga, Janice and Raja, Rizzi and Diana, Raf and his wife, Rachel and him. Rachel spent a week with us. Thank you so much, Rachel. Thank you, Pastor and Mrs. Likwede. Mommy was always calling and texting, even when we were at the ER. All my siblings and their spouses were praying for me. Shout out to all my in laws. Yemi Ogunto Yimbo, the same one that brought me food, also came to the hospital and she still brought a big box of clothes for the baby that he's still wearing till today. Mr. and Mrs. Walensky in Colorado Springs, they brought gifts even before the baby came. They came to the house after the baby came. The African store owner in Colorado Springs brought a big box of goodies for me and the baby. Her mom came as well. The mayor came to visit Mayor Yemi. Despite his busy schedule, he came to see the baby. I'm really grateful. Again, I apologize if I'm leaving out any names of the people that were there for me. Thank you so much. I appreciate every one of you. God bless you. Thank you to everybody that watched all the way to the end. He has a lot to say already. <laughs> bye. Say bye-bye. <laughs>